Okay, good. Now, the next cool thing. What happens when you see a tool? You're happy. What happens when you see an obstacle? You're unhappy. And there now you understand emotions. And that's so like that doesn't take much. That's once you've got this initial framework, it's like, okay, well, what's an emotion for? Positive. Move forward. Negative. Get away. Indeterminate. Stop. That's anxiety. Stop. You're not, you're not where you think you are. Your map isn't producing the desired outcome. It's wrong. What should you do? You don't know. Stop. Because if you don't know where to go, there's no point going anywhere. And then what? Prepare. That's anxiety. Stop. Prepare. Well, people hate that because well, for obvious reasons. Prepare. For what? Everything. Yeah. Very, very demanding psychophysiologically. And, and that's also something that's really worth knowing. It's like anxiety isn't just a psychological state that's unpleasant. It's like you're revved up and you're burning resources like mad. And you're in a biochemical state such that that's optimized for quick action but that's toxic if you inhabit it for any length of time. So not knowing what to do, that is not good. And it isn't just that it makes you feel bad. It hurts you, it damages you, it can kill you. It'll make you age, it'll make you fat, it'll give you diabetes. It'll suppress your immune system so you're more likely to develop cancer. It'll damage your brain, your hippocampus. It'll increase the probability that you have Alzheimer's. It's like, it's no joke that. It's you're running your machinery faster than you can replenish it. So. It's not a state that you can be in. It's not a state you can tolerate because it's anxiety. It's anxious. But it's also not a state you can live in. And so, I don't know where I am means everything's relevant. And I have to ramp up my capacity for action to deal with that. Bad. People do not like that. We do not like not to be where we think we are. We really, really, really don't like that. And we structure almost all of our environments constantly so that never happens. You know, we're all dressed the same with tiny, tiny variations. You know, we all follow the same traffic laws. Everybody's behaving according to the proper code in this room. And everyone in this building is doing the same thing. It's like we're doing everything we can to make sure that everyone knows exactly where they are and what they're doing all the time. And that's because when we're in that state, we can advance cautiously using positive things and maintain a modicum of positive emotion. And that's what we're basically trying to do. Okay, so you want to set up your world so that you're surrounded by things that move you along your way, that the obstacles are minimized, and that almost everything can be ignored. Okay, so emotion. Positive emotion, that's dopaminergic. That's incentive reward. You experience it in relationship to a goal. Because, you know, most of the time when you talk to behavioral psychologists, they'll tell you rewarding, reward is a satiation consequence. You're hungry, you get a piece of food, that's rewarding. It's like, that's, that's consumatory reward. And that shuts down the motivational system. It's, sa it's satiating, it makes you satisfied. That's not the same as incentive reward. Incentive reward says, come this way, come this way. Good things are over here, good things are over here. And that's dopaminergic. And that's the kind of reward people really like. We live for that. So when you talk about positive meaning in your life, this is an oversimplification, but a tremendous amount of that is incentive reward. You're in a goal-directed structure. It's a value structure. It's, let's say it's fairly well developed because you're sophisticated. Everything you do is linked to something else. You move ahead, it works. Yes. You move ahead, it works. Yes. And it's that constant moving ahead and the validation of the frame that makes your life meaningful. And so that also means no value system, no positive emotion. Which is another thing that's so much worth knowing. You know, the postmodernists complain about value systems constantly. And they say, well, the problem with a value system is that it includes some people, winners, and excludes other people, losers. It's like, yes, that's true. What's the answer? Flatten the value system. So there's no losers. Fine. No winners either. And if there's no, if the value system is flat, there's no point B. What the hell are you going to do? Where's your positive emotion? You got nothing to, you're going to wander around being happy that the value system is flat. It's like, no, you're not. Because when you flatten out value systems, you don't get rid of suffering. Because you can't. 
All you get rid of is the possibility of positive emotion. And that is not a good solution. So then you leave people with nothing but negative emotion. It's so naive. Okay, so good. So now we know. You're going from point A to point B. You're doing that with an action. If, if things are working out, if you see facilitators along the way that you can utilize, you're you, you get a kick of positive emotion. You know, and you can, you can even see that calibrated. Like, let's say you do better than expected on a test. Yes! It's like, that's better than doing as well as you expected. Because what the message is, is that not only am I moving towards my desired goal, but I'm moving along faster and with less effort than I thought. It's like, bang! Positive reinforcement. Right? You think, yes! Well, that's it. That's meaning. That's a big chunk of meaning. And so, a really meaningful event is one that gets you to the next step and simultaneously increases the probability that you're going to get to all the steps after that. That's like a maximally meaningful event. So, you know, you get, um, you're opening an envelope about whether or not you got into medical school. It's like you're going like this, right? Why? Why are you shaking? It's an envelope. No, it's not. It's a portal, right? It's a portal. And what's in that envelope either puts you that way into one world or that way into another. And you think, you're looking at it, you think, well, that's an envelope. It's like, your body isn't thinking that, not for a bloody second. It knows perfectly well that that's a portal. And you open it up, it's like, collapse. The whole, what would you call it? That whole avatar-related future just goes, ashes. Or, bang, it springs into reality. And you perceive that, and that you perceive all of that almost instantaneously. And, that produces that radical transformation in emotion. You're not reacting to the envelope. Or maybe the envelope isn't what you think it is. Or maybe the envelope isn't what you see. And that's more accurate. That's way more accurate. The envelope is way more than what you see. Okay, good. Let's break for 15 minutes, okay? And then we'll, we'll go ahead with the next part of this.